Welcome back. We're going to get started with Cam and Chris on the virtual race seminar, um, kind of a, everything you need to know before you start setting up your virtual race. Um, two quick notes before we start. If you have questions throughout this session, you can put them into your GoToWebinar module there. Matt is on answering questions throughout this. Um, if there's time, we'll ask them at the end, but I know we have a very busy uh, session here, so we may not get to them out loud. Um, but he will help you in writing. Um, also, this session and all sessions are going to, are being recorded. We will share them along with the slides and follow-up materials with everyone um, on Friday afternoon. You should get an email, and then we'll also have them on our blog and on our YouTube channel um, if you don't see the email. All right, Cam, you want to take it away? I will. Thank you so much. So good afternoon and good morning to everyone here. Um, so excited to have you guys. I'm Cam with Run Sign Up. With me today is Chris, part of our Give Sign Up team. And uh, hey, we are going to jump right in. Um, so some of the topics we're going to cover today, virtual races, what are they, why should we do them, set up, how to, what are the best practices, tips and tricks for those events, um, promotion, how to make the most successful um, event you can from a virtual event, swag, because we all know bling sells, especially in virtual, so we'll cover a little bit of that. Race day, we'll kind of just touch a little bit on that. We are going to have another uh, breakout session specifically for race day later on so um, be sure to sign up for and be a part of that um, but we'll just kind of touch on that a little bit and then share some success stories um, and answer any questions if there's time if that sounds like a plan we'll get rocking um, so virtual races what are they a virtual event is an event that can be done and joined from anywhere uh, that they want to participate in a virtual race is just a run walk or ride that can be completed anywhere and generally on that flexible schedule, whether that's a weekend long, a month long, some events have even been entire seasons or, or even year long events. So um, very flexible events for your participants to participate in. But virtual is not anything new. Um, last year, the largest, uh, in 2019 I should say, the largest event was 17,000 people for a standalone virtual race. Um, most races uh, prior to 2020 had a virtual component, but it would be like a sleep-in component uh, or run-in spirit sort of event where someone who couldn't attend the live traditional event would participate from wherever they were from, um, almost more as a donation or supporting the cause than a true interactive engagement with them. Why is virtual so important? Well, the first and most easiest reason to point out from last year is that regardless of pandemics or weather or if your DJ gets sick or something crazy happens in your world, in your community, a virtual event can still happen. There's nothing to stop it from going on. So you've got that advantage of knowing that you're going to have an event one way or the other. Um, there is a broader reach. I went to school in Memphis. I had friends from college that live in Colorado and Portland, and I live in Richmond, Virginia. So we can all support St. Jude's uh, uh, Research Center in Memphis, Tennessee, through a virtual event without leaving our home states. Um, so that's a fun opportunity for all of us. So you never know where your reach can go to. It can be uh, a little bit greater than your small community, or it can go a little bit further statewide or even nationwide. So you never really know. So that's an awesome opportunity for you to promote your event. And the biggest thing is creativity is king. You want to have an event that's really creative, really fun, gives them that hook and gets them excited to keep participating. Um, for participants, they don't have to travel. And that's huge. I don't have to change vacation plans. I don't have to take off from work if it's a bigger event somewhere else that I need to travel over to. Um, also, if people can't travel, you know, there's so many different restrictions that pop up and go away people are, are kind of not making those travel arrangements anymore. So now they don't have to, they can participate in their neighborhood, they can go to a park in their central area. The other thing too, is that you can use this as kind of a training motivator. So if you have a traditional event you're looking to have, or even a larger virtual event that you're gonna have later in the year, you can have smaller virtual events that lead up to it to kind of train people and get people excited for it. Um, giving them promotions like we talked about in the last session so that you can extend that reach and grow that database for them. Also, the social activity aspect of it. Me and some friends in the local community can kind of decide that we're going to go run together on this day to support this virtual event. Or like I said, me and a friend across the country can participate on the same day. We can grab our phones, put the earbuds in, 
chat to each other while we're out there participating in your 5K virtual event. Um, and then of course, all the sweet swag that you can get. That's a huge draw for people. Um, the medals, the t-shirts, and then getting creative with that. Hats, beanies, sweatshirts, uh, face masks have been a big one as well. So who does a virtual race? There's a lot of overlap, but there are some big changes um, or, or kind of some differences in the runners that you'll see participating in your virtual events. So let's go over a few of those now. Women are always a dominant feature in your um, events. Traditional events, they're usually just over half of your participants are going to be women uh, in that event. With virtual, that really increases. That gap gets a lot bigger between men and women uh, participating in your event. You can see here um, a gap of uh, 72 versus 56% in 2019. And then in 2020, you had a gap of 65 to 54%. So that's a huge number. And try to remember that as you're planning your event from everything from swag, um, email marketing, different features you have as part of the event as well. Another thing is that the crowd is typically a bit older in virtual events. And I personally found this statistic very interesting um, because I would have put money that it would have been the opposite. Under 18, most, most of those runners do not participate in a virtual event. So if you are targeting a younger crowd, a virtual event is going to be a, a more of an uphill challenge. Not undoable, just know that that's kind of the battle you're facing. Um, so you can see here, it does kind of level out once you get to about the mid uh, 30s and up from there. Um, and then of course, as you go older, you can see how those stats change. 2021 can't be the same as 2020. Um, yeah, 20 oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> oh no, you're fine. I was just saying that we need this to be a better year is all I'm saying. And I wanted <laughs> you to let you continue. <laughs> uh, so with 2020, you know, it was, it's better than nothing. You know, let's try to put something on and see what happens. 2021, we have to make a dedicated um, decision to, to really make these events shine. We've got great, easy technology. Think about the virtual results and how easy and simple it is for your people to participate and submit those results to the event. We have interactive uh, results. Think about race joy. Think about live streams. If you're not putting on a virtual event and doing a live stream, either as a pre-race event to get everyone hyped up for it or a post-race event especially to um, celebrate kind of what the donations were how many people participated um, what were the sponsor levels like and who was all involved in this event then you're really missing out on an opportunity not only to um, kind of solidify and wrap up this event that you've had but also to interact a little bit more in the community through either a facebook live a YouTube Live, and have that as part of your library now that you can share out to other people when they ask you, what do you guys do and how do you support the community? Um, think about social, um, ways that you can interact with them socially. Think about teams, teams are huge. If there's a team option available, a lot of people are gonna join that because they wanna feel that connection. People are looking for that these, these days. Um, photo contest, you know, with, with uh, the photo uh, webinar that we're gonna have, Later on uh, for this symposium, you can learn more about how you can have your participants upload those photos directly onto the site and some of the other changes we've had. But getting those photos and interactions in engaged with people so that they feel like, okay, I did see what my friend did. Or I do see what other people in the community are doing. I'm not just out here doing this alone in my neighborhood. Um, think about some of the perks you can offer, the swag. Think about some of the, the benefits and incentives. Get with your sponsors and see what other things they can offer to your participants during this virtual time. Um, restaurants are huge. Maybe they can give some sort of delivery service uh, because they don't have in-person dining. Well, that's a huge benefit to them as well. And then think of unique themes. Again, coming back to that creative, having that hook, getting them some way to get excited about this event. That could be interacting it or, um, or interpreting it into whatever your mission is. Um, and we'll go over some of those with some success stories later on. Um, it could be as simple as something popular, pop culture reference out there during the time. Um, think about things like uh, the Bigfoot run, uh, where the Bigfoot's walking across and he's got that big old thing of toilet paper in his hand. That was very socially relevant when that event came out. And it was very exciting for people to have that medal or that t-shirt to wear. Plus, it's kind of funny when you see other friends wearing it. 
Cam, actually, I have one thing to add real quick on that unique themes and that interactive challenge. I do know of a great nonprofit organization that's doing a long practice at home challenge for their kids. It's a performance nonprofit. And at the end, they're doing a live stream of a virtual performance of these kids, which I think is a super smart idea. It's a great way to engage them, to keep them doing exactly what their mission is there for, keeping those kids engaged in music, also keeping people um, engaged with the organization and seeing how they support the community. So I just wanted to throw that in there real quick. Yeah, awesome. So we're gonna go over race setup tips. And um, real quick, for, for those who may be new to run sign up or run sign up uh, platform here, I wanna kind of just walk you through real quick how you can get started on your race. It is free, there's no setup fees. You go right onto runsignup.com and click on create new race. That's gonna jump you right into the setup of your race wizard, seven simple steps to get started. That's gonna walk you through the who, what, when, where, why of your event um, and be very easy for you to get started on this page. Um, but some of the things to think about as you're kind of going through your pre-launch checklist, is there a charitable component to your event? Um, if there is, how can we highlight that charity? How can we um, give them kind of a little bit of boost in the community? People like to support uh, nonprofits, especially local nonprofits or some of the bigger nonprofits that they may have a connection to. Um, maybe they had a family member that had heart cancer. So that's a big nonprofit they love to support through 5Ks, 10Ks. Um, so if you have something like that, definitely prop that up and make it a big, big deal. Um, from a virtual race timeline, how long is this event going to be? How long can you capture people's attention? Is it going to be a week, a weekend long, a month long? Um, and how are people going to be competing in this event? Um, distances, and this is something that gets overlooked sometimes. I hear a lot of times people want to have a 5K or I want to have a 10K, and that's great, and we're happy to help you guys with that. But consider also adding the option of a one-mile fun run. Consider adding, adding an option that's maybe a little bit longer. That way you get more people um, interested in the event, people who this might be their first time doing any sort of endurance event. They might not feel uh, like they can do a 5K or a 10K, but that one mile option gives them a lot of uh, flexibility for their schedules. Pricing. A lot of times when we have an in-person traditional race, the pricing is relative to the distance. With virtuals, we're finding that it's easier to do price differences based on the perks they're gonna receive, not the distances. It doesn't cost anything if they do 100 miles versus 10 miles versus one mile, uh, as far as difference for us setting up the race. So instead, maybe have your differences be an entry with no t-shirt, an entry with a full t-shirt metal package, maybe an entry with a t-shirt metal sweatshirt, beanie, face mask, everything goes with it package, and let people choose from those options. Um, that might help a little bit in, in the uh, signups and the registrations that you have. And then communication plan. How are you gonna be getting them those perks, those swags, swag items, and, and communicating that to them? Communication is key. You know, whatever you decide, um, whether that's we're going to send it all in one day, we're going to send it over multiple days, um, just make sure you're communicating that to people and you'll have less headaches and less issues down the road. So we're going to jump in kind of just some, some quick step by steps how you would set this up on your page. Um, under race location, when it's asking for that, one of the big questions we get is we're, we want anyone to do this anywhere they want. Perfect, right there in the address line. Put something very generic like anywhere or anywhere you'd like. The big thing, you do still have to have country, zip code, city, state, things like that. Um, but we'll go over how you can hide some of that in the next, uh, next part here. By simply going down and checking um, that we're gonna hide the play section on our race page, you'll be able to actually hide that, that information um, from, from participants when they're looking at the event. And then also not showing the directions to the race page. That will kind of remove that part of that uh, of the of the equation. So people are not going to be looking as much um, for where to go. They'll understand that they can run this anywhere. And really to drive that home, you can go into the race website section and then go into race location and change that custom location description for any sort of descriptors that you want to put for that race. And we go to the uh, race verbiage. You may want to consider changing it from race. You know, we talked about people. Um, not wanting to do a race uh, or their event is not a race, it's a family fundraiser. 
Um, maybe changing it to virtual race or virtual event or virtual fun run. You can change that verbiage all under the race website and then under miscellaneous settings. Um, doing so will kind of give people a better understanding of where, where you're coming from with the event. And then custom questions. Um, this has been a, a very key part. People don't read uh, descriptions, especially if they're longer. So some people will just go to your site, hit the sign up button, off they go, and not realize that they're actually signing up for a virtual event. Adding a quick custom question that says, you understand that this is a virtual event and can be completed anywhere, anytime, confirm yes, no, and require that answer. It's gonna make sure people take the time to slow down a little bit and understand this is a virtual event. Another thing you might want to put is for a custom date, instead of saying that this is going to be uh, an event that goes from January 1st until December 31st, you may just want to have the custom date say complete your, your run anytime in 2021. Um, that way people understand, oh, I don't have to do this today. I can do this anytime for this entire year. Um, that'll also make it a little bit less confusing once you're in the middle of the event, um, you know, August, September timeframe, oh, did I already miss it? Am I too late? Because they see it started back on January 1st. If they see complete your run anytime in 2020, they feel like, oh, it's still opportunity for me to sign up for this event. And then different uh, event display options. Um, highlighting some of the different things. You can see here we've got pictures of the shirts and the bibs and the medals. Adding those images into your event Give it a little bit more pop. You want uh, your website to really highlight the entire event top to bottom. Um, you know, we're, you're not going to have the ability to have that in-person excitement. So how can we build up excitement in other places? This is a great place to start with. Um, and you can edit all that information right there on the display options. The other thing is you see, we can add these little tabs where you have the celebrate in style uh, over top of it and really kind of draw some highlights to it. Um, using things like the emojis that you see with the diamond rings and the champagne glasses to kind of uh, further explain what this event's going to be. So get creative in this. and You'll really see um, a lot more excitement about the event um, while you're getting to promote it. And then, of course, user registration emails. Um, you can customize all these emails. We have a whole host of emails that go out for you um, without any work for you. But if you can go in there and customize it, um, you can really add some extra descriptions, especially when it comes to things like packet pickup or instructions that you can run this anywhere. Um, you can add things like sponsor interaction. You can see here a great email from the uh, Scott Coffee uh, Morristown run. Um, you can see step one, invite your friends. Step two is pick up instructions. And then step three is how to actually participate by printing out your bid and submitting results. And they've included links to all of that right there. So just some fun things that you can add to, to give people a little bit more communication. Um, again, communication is gonna be key for these events. Um, and then adding details, not just saying, yes, you can have a t-shirt um, and here's a quick picture of it, but how are the t-shirts gonna be handed out to me? How am I going to receive them? Do I need to come pick them up or are they gonna be shipped out to me? Um, and, and what options come with that? Instead of simply just saying, here's a t-shirt option, select your size, extra large, small, medium, whatever it may be. And then we're gonna get into how to promote virtual races and how to spread the word. Um, so if you see here, you've got a, a capture form that, that's been created. Really fun part about this is that you can have people come to your site, maybe get a little bit of the description, read through it, maybe watch a video that you've put on there, but they're still not quite sure exactly if, if this is the right event for them. What you can do is create a custom capture list for, for these emails. And then you can have a little pop-up that shows up to capture that quick information. You can put a nice bold title on the top of it, interested in learning more, find out more details about the event, and then they just put in their email, their last name, uh, their first name, and you have that information to follow up with them. You can also then have drip campaigns for those people set up that are going to automatically send out emails to get them to come back and register for your event. Um, maybe you want to run a promotion for those people. Maybe it's a 5% or um, buy one, get the second one for X amount off and put those coupons out there to people so that you can get them excited for your event again. 
these pop-ups can either be set to slide in um, or pop up right onto the screen. And you can set them for either 30 seconds uh, or once they're about to leave the site. So once their, their mouse starts to go up into the URL to change sites or go to a different tab, it'll pop up on the screen and catch their attention for you. Customize social sharing. So one of the biggest things we've seen this year is the increase of people using social media to refer their friends to the events and get involved and participate in this together. So you wanna be able to control that message. You wanna be able to control the, the wording and the pictures and the images that are going out there. Um, if any of you've been on a site and you've been able to click the little Facebook icon, pops up this little box that you can then quickly share it off to Facebook, you know that you can also customly edit that. But if something's already there, most people are gonna leave it with what's there. So if you can create a nice, concise message for them to send out where they don't have to do any work, most people will see that, go, that's great, hit share, and they're done. Um, so how are you gonna be setting up that image? One quick thing is if you have any issues with the correct image being shown, you may need to go into the Facebook debugger and enter your race website URL to be able to clear that out to change it back to your current images here. Uh, but it's very simple. You can create smaller images for a smaller uh, social sharing or the large image as well for any sites that support that larger image on that, on that uh, profile. So just some quick stats here. Um, in 2019, 5% uh, registrations came from Facebook, but this past year, 12% of transaction dollars came from that. So that's a pretty incredible increase that you see in there. And then 24% of web views last year. Um, when you really start to boil that down, you can really see that people are engaging with their friends, families, relatives, coworkers through social media channels, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever the case may be. That's where people are interacting now because they don't have as many opportunities to come in person and talk. So the more that you can make your face, Facebook and your social media influence um, a, a standout location for people to get excited about, um, the better your event's going to be. So being very intentional about what you put on your Facebook page, what you put on that Facebook event page so that you can attract attention and then interact it all with Run Sign Up directly. So right here, we're talking about the Referral Rewards Program. 17% um, of transactions came from referrals in 2020, up from 7% in 2019. Again, if you're not familiar with the Referral Rewards Program, we will be having a demo and, and walkthrough of that tomorrow at one o'clock um, Eastern time. So be sure to sign up for that, but that's a very powerful, powerful tool that we have. Um, and when you start to use it, you'll start to see how easy it is to, to grow your event and grow those registrations. So um, real quick, just some of the quick steps for that is as you set up those referral and swag rewards, you want to really promote those as, um, as, as extra perks for people. So you're gonna set that up, promote your referral and swag rewards by creating that custom section um, to kind of detail some of the different levels. You can have multiple different levels. Maybe five people referred gets them a discount or a refund. Maybe 10 people referred gets them a special unique sweatshirt or t-shirt or hat. Um, and making sure that people understand what those rewards are. So then they go out there and try for you. Um, what we find is that a lot of people, if they can get to that fifth registration level or, or fifth extra referral, they probably have a few more extras that they can invite to the party. But if there's not that extra carrot at the end, like a 10th or a 15th referral um, perk, they may not try as hard or once they get to the first reward system there. So having a few extra ones will definitely help. Um, you can definitely customize the social sharing text that shows up. So when you want them to uh, invite their friends to be a part of it, you can customize that wording like we just talked about. And then of course, customize those images as well. Um, the biggest thing though is registration emails. You want people to be uh, reminded that they can get these rewards as they're participating in this event. So sending out a, a, a random, an extra email uh, three, four, or five days after they've signed up to remind them, hey, don't forget to invite your friends to uh, receive some of these unique rewards. Uh, that will put it back in their head. They'll get back in. Maybe they'll remember to ask their friends at work that next day. So just some great options for you there as well. 
Swag, design, order, and ship. Um, swag is the seller. Um, people want to, to join these events because of the swag. Um, I can think of at least three different events that I've signed up for this year. Nowhere close to my area. I just saw some of the cool medals they had, saw some of the cool t-shirts they had, and I signed up. Um, you want to keep the designs tasteful. Um, I, you know, keep it GEPG in that area. Humor is definitely popular, but, be, you know, just make sure that's a tasteful humor. Um, we talked a little I can't bit. Get behind I can't get behind humor. I don't think, I don't see any place for humor in a race or in a workplace. <laughs> or how, how dare you, Cam? Continue. Um, pop culture references are always uh, a good fit. So, like we talked about the Bigfoot um, uh, social distancing run, that was a great fit with the toilet paper there. Um, but do be careful with any sort of trademark content. You don't want to have to um, change the entire race because uh, that is a trademarked logo or something that you're using there. Um, think about the unique items that you can have. So, besides t shirts, medals, I think tank tops. Remember, most of our participants are going to be women, so that's a huge um, opportunity for you to target and, and market directly to them. Think about hats, face masks. Um, uh, we've even seen people who do the little uh, things that tie to your shoelaces as you're running. Um, so think about the little things that you can add in there um, that make your event stand out a little bit more from everyone else. Medals are very common. Uh, a lot of people ask, are, you know, should I do medals? Are, are people really wanting medals? Um, I'm sure you will see throughout the symposium, various part, uh, members of our teams have medals just hung up in their offices. I'm sure you guys have a few hung up in yours as well. People love medals. Um, they love hearing the bling as they walk past in the office or they close the door, they hear all the medals rattling around. You, you, gotta, you gotta add a medal in there. Um, and remember, women are most of your runners, so size things appropriately. If you can do a gender-specific T-shirt where it is a little bit more cut for a women's shape, then that's a great option to add in there. Um, you will find that most of your orders will be in that size versus in the generic, you know, adult male size there. When you're thinking about, thinking about ordering your shirts, if you don't have a shirt or a vendor, um, a shirt vendor or a metal vendor, Ask your timer. Again, these timing experts that you have as part of your events, they're not just there to time an event. They are industry professionals. They know who to talk to. They have people who do a good job and can give you a kind of an understanding of how this process is going to work. So lean on them. Ask them questions. Um, they are going to be a valuable part of your event. Um, think about when you're planning to ship and hand out these shirts. Is it going to be a rolling uh, handout so that as I register, it's going to be shipped to me automatically? Um, are we going to have several set points where maybe one month out, we'll do an order, two weeks out, we'll do an order, and then on race day, we'll do another order? Is this going to be after the race begins? If it's like a month-long event, we're going to wait till the first day of the event and then start shipping out um, all the shirts and medals? Or are we going to wait until the race finally completes? I would, I would suggest trying to get some things out for uh, earlier than later because people then can wear your t-shirts, wear your swag, take photos of them, upload them, and that's just gonna continually to brand your event out there in the communities. People will join your event because they saw their friend wearing your t-shirt. Um, so that's really exciting uh, opportunity for you guys. Costs associated with those small batches. You know, because you may be doing smaller batches, What's that cost difference? Can you pass that on as part of the registration cost or are you wanting to absorb those? And what are the estimates in between? And then as always, communicate that timeline often and as, as often as you can because people will start to wonder, where is my t-shirt coming? It's just gonna save headaches if you can constantly remind people, what is this schedule that we're gonna be adhering to? Pickup versus shipping. Um, with local events, obviously there was always that um, maybe a packet pickup day or it was a you know day of race packet pickup. But with virtual events, if you're having a community um, centered event and there's going to be a lot of local participants, that still might be an opportunity for you. So don't discount having a packet pickup. Um, that will definitely save you in shipping costs because you can just have them right there available for you. Um, but also remember, there's going to be a, a greater reach, so maybe have shipping as an option. Um, you can have shipping included, so it's free for everyone to have it shipped. 
shipping as an add-on fee. So if they'd like it shipped, they can add that or as an extra fee that's just gonna be tacked on automatically and, and portrayed on their, their checkout screen. Um, shipping is expensive, uh, or can be depending on what you're shipping, and it is time consuming, so don't underestimate it. And again, work with your vendors, work with your timers. They may have options available to you um, at a bulk discount because of what you're already doing with them. So see if there's any options that they know of um, to help you out with any of these as well. Um, shipping address, we do have the ability to confirm with the USPS database whether or not this shipping address that they are providing is the correct address. The other thing with setting these up is that a lot of people have set up their run sign up profile in the past, but maybe they used a work address. Maybe it's a former address that they don't live at anymore. So making sure you confirm that shipping address one last time during registration is a huge help in making sure you don't have any headaches when it comes to delivering that packet. And then fulfillment, if you're shipping a large quantity of shirts, again, talk to your, to your timer and use that fulfillment company. Um, you do not wanna be having that kitchen party table with a thousand person people race um, setting up and ship shipping all those packets. A fulfillment company is gonna take on that responsibility for you. Um, we're gonna have some more shipping recommendations for you tomorrow at 2.30, but if you need any more, uh, if you have any more questions or need more information, you can always go to our runsignup.com slash go virtual, and there is a list of vendors who can help you step-by-step step through all of that. So race day, making virtual real. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, virtual results and setting up that, the, the ease of use of the platform. Um, but it's very easy, they just go right onto the platform, they can click either on their profile, you can send out email results, uh, links to them, so they can just click right onto it and submit those results back to the platform. Um, again, we're gonna be having more information about this on Thursday at three o'clock, so if you want more information, do sign up for that as well. There's no login required for any uh, virtual races. If you check that option, you can see where you can check it down there as you're setting up your virtual you know, virtual events and virtual settings, where if someone wants to go on and just submit their time, maybe they're on their work computer, maybe they're not on their typical device that they would use, they can just go on, enter in their email, and then submit those results automatically right there. One fun thing to, to keep in mind, a lot of people who are gonna participate in your virtual event may not have ever done another endurance event in their lives. So giving them the opportunity to uh, report that they have actually completed the event, but may be embarrassed or not wanna put their time out there, um, giving them the opportunity to simply check and say, I've completed and I participated in this event. And you can see here, we've got Bob highlighted um, where it shows that he has no pace on the event uh, for, that's marked here. So it, it allows them to still register on the leaderboard and that they participate in the event but just doesn't show any time available for them. Yeah, I, I personally, uh, in, when I participate in these kinds of events, that's the kind of person I am. I love having that option to be able to say, hey, I was there, please give me a t-shirt. I will not tell you how fast I ran. That's more my speed. So I love that this is an option for us. Um, going into the text results. So for any of your 5K, 10K, um, traditional endurance events, not your challenge events, but for any of the other ones, you can actually set up a, a text messaging result where people can opt in, get that text message to their phone, and actually text back their time very easily. Um, so that makes it really fun because people don't have to get back onto the site. They can just go right there, type their time in, type their bid number, send it back, and they are on the leaderboard for you. The other option is using RaceJoy. And again, we're gonna have more details about RaceJoy tomorrow at 3.30, so make sure you're a part of that because there's so many different things RaceJoy can do. It's a great mm -hmm. app. Um, but the big highlights here is that you can have multiple courses and mo multiple different options or the run anywhere option. So if you have local parks or um, private land that is willing to work with you and have your event uh, hosted over the course of a couple of weeks, you can have that uh, as an option where people can go at any time hit start, go out and run that track. Um, you can make that race a little bit more real because you can add in sponsorship opportunities. People can cheer for, for their friends and family if they post it onto social media. You've got that GPS tracking. They feel like they're on an actual course. Of course, if they're running anywhere, um, they can always just hit start, go run around their neighborhood. And once they get to that distance that you've set, it will automatically upload that time to the leaderboard for them. So there's no other work that they have to do. 
Um, if you have any questions about that, please ask your timer about RaceJoy. It's a great app to include as part of your event. Digital bibs. So people love bibs. Um, obviously with, with virtual events, we wanted to have a way to have digital uh, uh, representations of those. So you can customize and create this with your own custom images. Um, if you can add sponsor logos to this, if you have anyone that wants to be a bib sponsor. And what a lot of people will do with these is they, you know, some will print it out and actually go running with them. Um, some will download them onto their computer and upload it to Facebook, Instagram, and kind of share this bib with their friends and family. Again, another opportunity for you guys to be marketed in the communities and beyond to whatever their social media reaches. We're going to have more information about this uh, tomorrow at 1.30. So if you have any questions, join into that. Finisher certificates work very similar. Um, but this is a free reward for people at the end of, end of the event without really spending much time. Um, five, 10 minutes, depending on how creative you are, uh, you can create your finisher certificate, add those sponsor logos to it, add your race logo, and it's something for them to just be able to remember uh, their participation by. Um, again, a lot of people will download this and then share that off to Facebook, Twitter, wherever they want to share uh, their images at. Virtual photos, we talked a little bit about this, but giving people the opportunity to load those photos directly onto the site um, can actually create a catalog of participation. Um, if this is your eighth year of being, in, being a, an event, I can go back and look at past events and keep adding to my catalog. Um, so we're gonna be having more of that discussion to, tomorrow at two o'clock. And then hashtags. Um, I think this is one of the best ways that you can really promote the event, especially um, if it's a longer event, maybe a week or so, and really start building up some steam over the course of the event, is that as people are participating, they're taking photos of their swag, of their medals, of their friends running together, of their costumes even, adding a hashtag that everyone's going to post to. Um, if you have maybe a Saturday that's going through that event, and that's going to be one of the big days that people are going running, make sure you have everyone possible post photos on that day with the hashtag, you might even become trending, so who knows? Um, it's just another great way for you to have um, a record of all these photos being taken. Make sure you share them um, on your pages as well and like them, maybe comment on them, so that people feel engaged not only with their friends and family, but also with you guys as the race directors and timers. If you want to see someone who's just learned about hashtags in a very wholesome way, Dion Warwick is now on Twitter going on a great uh, social media journey, well worth the, the wait and the watch, and also helps you learn about hashtags in a fun way. <coughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so just some quick success stories that we have, uh, and then we'll probably get into any questions if there's still time there. Um, the Harpoon 5 Miler um, is usually a sellout race. Um, they, they went virtual this past year. Um, and offer two different event options. So you had the six pack, which was just a $15. You got a race bib and virtual results, very basic package. And then they had the 12 pack, which was $35, included the race bib, the virtual results, but also the race shirt and a four pack of beer. So that's definitely my go-to if we're gonna be signing up for that. One of the fun things they did though, is they increased donations by 38%. Um, and the individual donors. So it, it was a great opportunity for them to expand um, from their traditional sellout race to being able to welcome anyone who wanted to be a part of it. And then they actually made a fun 25 second video that was featured on their Facebook page, uh, kind of reminiscent of the old AOL dial up. Um, so if you have a chance to go take a look at that, I would, it's a very creative video. Um, another great one, this was kind of a nationwide event. Um, brought by uh, Fleet Feet. Uh, this is their big run. It's their 5K celebrating Global Running Day. Um, they obviously went virtual this year and had just under 11,000 participants and raised just under $43,000 for Girls on the Run. So just some, some excellent opportunities here for you guys to still raise money. People want to support your organizations. People want to support your events. They just need a way to do so. So giving them a virtual option allows them the flexibility of doing that uh, without interfering with their schedule or any other travel plans they may have. Um, they did a simple $10 registration fee that got them a $15 voucher to their local fleet feet, a digital bib, 
results and then training tips that they sent out. So they were actually able to uh, grow their database through this uh, and now have more people that they can advertise other events to or even other promotions they're running as an organization. They also sold uh, branded face masks as an extra add-on that you could have for, for um, your participants. Lifeline of Ohio. So I did not know this. I had to look it up and I went over to their site. Uh, but the average organ donor will save about eight and a half lives on average. So they incorporated that directly into their event. You can oh. see with the $8.50 registration fee, they had eight days to complete a virtual 5K. Um, it, it just really tying in their entire message and their entire theme, having great photos like you see right there on their, uh, on their front page. Um, to be able to, to really get excited for people to be participating in this event. Um, and that was their 21st annual event that they had there. So that's all I've got. Um, if there's any questions, maybe we, we oh, we're kind of right at time. So, John, I'll let you kind of. <laughs> that. Yeah, I think um, all of the sessions today, there's a lot of info to get oh, get through. These are kind of a compilation of everything that we have done and put together in the last nine months so we may run out of time for some out loud questions but there are always questions um, being answered throughout that's it for this one um, you guys have another little break here for about 20 minutes come back for the next link uh, we'll take you in for virtual challenges with eric um, those are the virtual events that tend to last for weeks or months and have multiple activities that happen um, you know that, that apply to that challenge they have long-term goals for those all right Thank you guys, and we will see you later. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody.